Well, good morning, guys. I am at the entrance of Burley Head National Park, which is in Australia on the Gold Coast, which is very different from where I normally make these videos. And we're short, the Australian flora is extremely different from the North American flora. In fact, I don't think there's a single place on Earth that has a more different flora than where I'm normally working than Australia does. So everything here is very different. The families, often the families even are completely different from what you'll find in North America, although there are a few similarities. Uh, so I might make a couple mistakes when I do this video, but to jump right into it. This plant we see right here on the coast is Pandanus sectorius, which is a family, part of the family of Pandanaceae. It's a pretty good one, I think. It has um, it's a genus Pandanus with over 600 species in it, although one of the uh, most important people to work on that genus, I think it's the same one, something St. John, was a pretty massive splitter when it comes to species, so some might disagree with how many species there are. Nevertheless, it is a very rich genus, but the species Pandanus sectorius is by far the most abundant being found all throughout the Pacific from Hawaii, where it is in fact native, to here, in fact, where I believe it's also native. Some noteworthy about it is that it is, um, oh, it's just a cool species in general. It's very, very salt tolerant, as we can hopefully imagine here. This is a place that gets a full brunt of the waves and salt spray that comes with them. Well, let's move on. Moving along, we aren't really seeing any more species along the coast in this highly salt exposed or salt spray exposed area. Well, we can also see this plant, which unfortunately, well, I can't tell what it is, looks a lot like a species of shyness. So I think it's in Sapindaceae, but whatever it is, if it is a shyness, it is in fact highly invasive in Australia as it is in Hawaii. Hawaii is really the closest analog to the Australian flora that I'm actually somewhat familiar with. This plant here, very clearly remember the pea family Fabaceae, or at least I, I'm assuming, just, it's just so different here, everything, that you can really not be too sure about. It is also a twining on these leaves, which really I think gives away that's most likely a member of the family Fabaceae. And we have another interesting plant, which I'll show close up in a second up there. That's Macaranga tenarius, which is a member of the family Euphorbiaceae. That's anyone. Here's a little closer up look of a Macaranga tenarius I was talking about, and you can see that's what its stem looks like and the leaves are peltate, so the petiole attaches to sort of the back of the leaf like this instead of to um, uh, laterally, I guess you might be able to say this. I'm not sure what the best word to describe it is, but it's pretty clear what I'm talking about. It's like a shield almost. I feel like the stem almost looks like that of a castor bean plant, which you can see right here. Which I think is pretty interesting because they are both uh, related to each other, part of the same family Euphorbiaceae, although it is such a broad family with so much diversity in appearance. There's just some some trees look like totally normal trees, and there's some low-growing herbs and some really weird-looking species that look like cacti in the family. It's also very clearly a salt-tolerant or salt-spray-tolerant species, like the Pandanus sectorius, but not quite as salt-spray-tolerant. Pandanus sectorius really is uh, probably one of the most salt-spray-tolerant species in the whole world, and it's famous for being able to tolerate the very harsh conditions of the atolls of the Pacific. Otherwise, though, I'm having a lot of trouble identifying many of the plants here. Couldn't say exactly what that is, but that's a species of a splenium. Uh, it's a type of fern in the family of Spleniaceae, and what really gives it away, I think, is that it's got these linear sori, which might be hard to see. Fascinating. Really common throughout the tropics of the world, but you're, I think these are a couple species in the temperate parts of North America, but they look quite different than this. This plant's huge, it's leaves that are probably over four feet long, or 1.2 meters for y'all metrically inclined people. Heading around the side of the burly head, we're getting away from the intense salt spray zones. We're getting some more species. I just want to point out this is a species of Schiflora, which is in fact invasive. You know, I think most species are native to the Pacific Islands or New Zealand. It's more of the family of Raleigh but I don't think they're native to Australia, and it is highly invasive in Hawaii. We also have this plant, this big tree here. This is Ficus macrophylla, commonly known as the Morton Bay Fig, which is distinguished by, at least in part, by its large leaves. See here, let's see how big they are. They're fairly large compared to my hand with these notable brown undersides to them. Get quite massive and it's found from somewhere south of Sydney to, I don't know, somewhere in central northern Queensland natively. And of course you can find it right here. So it's a very cool plant. It's a very, one of the most uh, favorite plants of Australians everywhere and they love to plant them because they provide a lot of shade and can grow quite large. I think the tallest ones in the wild can go over 70 meters tall or about like well over 200 feet at least. Oh, that's fairly rare. 
They are quite large trees, nevertheless. And now we're entering the forest zone, and I'm going to have a lot more difficulty identifying any plants. But I might be able to show you a few. I don't believe I've ever talked about this plant family on my channel before, but this is a member of the palm family, of course, Ericaceae, and it is Archonthophoenix Cunninghamiana. I fancy pronounced the genus at least, but regardless, it is also known as the Picabine palm, quite commonly. It's found all throughout the rainforest of Eastern Australia, in the subtropical areas, because there's some more colder rainforest too, where we certainly won't be finding any palm trees, but nevertheless, interesting plant. For at least two other palm species you can find within the national park that are native. Actually, yeah, for you North American people, Australians will call it almost anything a national park. You have over 600 national parks, and many of them are quite small. This one I don't think is any larger than about a couple, about, about one square kilometer in area. But still really neat, and a remnant of a littoral rainforest that you used to be able to find more commonly on the Gold Coast. Here we have a great example of the other palm species you can find here. This is Calamus mulleri. Can't remember the common name for it, but I think mean, I'll just put it up, it doesn't matter. What's really interesting about this one is that it's incredibly spiky and prickly, as you can see there. I would not want to touch those at all, but I will. Yeah, those aren't very, very fun. Those are pretty sharp. And they also got quite a lot of prickles on the leaves. Right here. Obviously, it would seem it's a bit of a deterrent to herbivory, or at least that's what it's intended to be. But I'm not sure there's any large herbivores that would prey on it anymore, because there's been quite a lot of mammal extinction in Australia for the past 30,000 years. Well, that's probably a topic for a different video. That one of the Archonta Phoenixes. So many cool plants here I just can't identify. I'm sure one day I'll get them, but until then, well, that was just a leaf. Going uphill, I think it's pretty clear the uh, vegetation is changing just a little bit. These trees certainly look very different. They're brown furrowed bark. Well, unfortunately, I have no idea what they are. Heading uphill, it's certainly clear the forest has taken a bit of a turn. Well, I'm still not quite sure what these tree species are. You know, they're obviously very different. They look like they could be members of the family Myrtaceae, which is, uh, I mean, that's one of the most important families for the Australian flora because it includes the eucalyptus group and the melaleucas and a quite a lot of other more tropical, less drought hardy species. That plant right there, though, the palm tree is, it has to be Livestona australis. So that's three species of palm we found here. That was just also native to the eastern coast of Australia. Livestona is a genus I think is found quite commonly in the rainforests of Asia, say into uh, Australia, clearly. They're commonly known as cabbage palms, but they're not the same as the uh, Sable cabbage palm in the southeastern United States. But they look quite similar. It's quite cool, the, the diversity of areas here. We can see some of the Araucaria trees.
I want to guess that these are a member of the uh, Kinus cordyline. Well, it's a little hard to tell. These plants with the red berries are clearly monocots. Really cool, interesting plants. I'm not sure if the ice is going to catch us very well. Spiderweb right up there. I don't can make out what that sign says. There's your species ID. I don't think it's a much better view of the young Livestona australis. You can see if it's stem or trunk very well there while it's young. Meanwhile, these ones are much more well developed and older. Let's get around the corner here. That's a great view of them. Dang, that tree is massive. I just can't tell you what it is. Okay, now here's a species I fortunately do know. This is almost certainly the guy with the compound leaves, Tuna ciliata, also known as red cedar, which is a member of the mahogany family Meliaceae. I don't know anything about that family, or even a plant that much, aside from the fact that it was valued as a timber species by the European settlers, so they've gotten quite rare from logging. We can see just a few of them here, and it's leaves. It's big compound leaves, almost remind me of those of like a hickory or walnut. But of course, it's not very closely related to them. Check that out. I wish I'd leave my lizards a little better, because that's a really cool one. These guys are just everywhere in Australia. Yeah, totally different plants here. I cannot overstate how different everything is. And I mean, even identifying broadleaf trees is a bit of a new thing for me. So I'm not the best at it. But I am almost positive that it was Tuna ciliata, which you see a couple of here. Okay, this tree here, Ilanthus in Burba Flora, might have actually been what I was talking about. And it's quite. Uh, the bark is quite different. If you look at the leaves up there, they are very similar in compound, although that's not exactly I mean it is the uh, same species. Just love adjusting to brightness like this. Anyways, of course, Ilampus is represented in Utah by the terribly invasive Ilampus altissima, but Ilampus is in fact a genus of some native representatives in Australia, which must be that one. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. I hope this video was a little bit watchable. You know, it was maybe not that informative. But uh, I'll try to make the next ones a little bit better. I'm just going to show you some of the Araucaria trees. I think just Araucaria um, Cunninghamii or hoop pines around here, which are, I think it's a really cool plant, but I'm, I'm sure I'll get to it at some other spots. So see you next time. I take it back. I just passed them by finally realizing it. This is the Araucaria Cunninghamii. What an interesting species. Our caria is a, a lineage that is very strongly affiliated with the uh, former remnants of Gondwana. Even though it used to be found all throughout the world, it went extinct in the Northern Hemisphere at the end of Cretaceous. So now it's really only found in Australia, New Caledonia, Southern South America, and if, like Norfolk Island, a few other places. Not in New Zealand, unfortunately, but there are some of the representatives of the Avarcariaceae you can find in that continent. Or say continent, but it's a country, whatever. Anyways, thanks for watching and see you next time.